Hey, everyone. Uh, I want to welcome you to the online gathering of 24 Church. We are so happy uh, that you're here with us to worship Jesus and uh, and just to celebrate in this thing that we call Christianity and the family of God today. Uh, my name's Ben. I'm one of the pastors here at 24. And I always like to start by talking about just kind of what we're about here at 24 Church. Uh, and this is, this is basically it. Gospel, family, and mission. So uh, we are people who are committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we're saved by grace through faith. Uh, we are people that are committed to one another. We're family, and God has adopted us into his family. And we're people that are committed to mission. Uh, and so we are aiming to be God's salt and light people uh, wherever we go uh, in all all the things of life, uh, we're on mission for Jesus and we want others to know about him. Uh, and so we're, with the Holy Spirit's help, we're, we're trying to really come around those those commitments and those ideas and, and to grow and be disciples together. Uh, if you are a first time uh, visitor here with us, or maybe a, you've only you know, tuned in a couple times, uh, I, we would love to get to know you and connect. And the easiest way that we can do that is if you go to 24church.com, you'll see a bar kind of across the top of that front page of the website that says, let's connect. If you click on there, you can fill out an information card uh, and just tell us about yourself. And uh, we'll be able to follow up with you uh, when you do that. And so we can answer any questions that you might have. You can leave a prayer request. Um, you know, basically anything. We would we would love to follow up with you and get to know you and help you plug in here at 24 Church if you're interested. So uh, please go to our website, 24church.com and hit the Let's Connect bar uh, and let's get to know one another. Uh, we're going to worship together today, first through song and then through the Word of God. And I want to pray for us uh, and ask God to help us. So if you would, uh, let's bow our heads together and let's pray and ask God to help us. Uh, Father, we thank you for another week. Uh, we thank you for uh, the cooler weather as the seasons are changing, and we're getting here into fall and then winter, and um, we just thank you that you are a God who created all this beauty around us, the changing of the seasons and and different weather and, and all these things, and you did that to glorify yourself and, and also for our good that we could enjoy it. And so we just thank you for that today. Lord, I want to pray as we think about you. Lord, as we attempt to draw near to you, Father, I pray that you would draw near to us and that you would uh, open our eyes to see the truth and beauty of the gospel uh, this morning, the truth and beauty of Jesus. And Lord, help us um, to worship. Help us to worship in spirit and in truth. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
for less of glory to my is 
he worthy of our blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of us? Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move among us? And does Jesus our Messiah forever those He loves? Does God intend to dwell again with us? Does tell you uh, for a minute about the Worth It initiative. The Worth It initiative is a giving uh, initiative that we embarked in, on uh, as a church over a year ago. Uh, and, and kind of the subtext of it or, or the, the subtitle is uh, investing in gospel, family, and mission, uh, which is what we're already about. But we we wanted to double down as a church family uh, and saw some opportunities for new ministry, uh, for a building expansion. And so the Worth It initiative encompasses all that stuff, all these new ideas that we think with uh, that God's leading us to participate in, and, and it encompasses all our regular budget. So it's just one big fund. It's all together. But when you when you give to Twenty Four Church, uh, all of it goes to the Worth It initiative. And so most of you know, but we are about at the 85, 90% mark on a building campaign, and we're looking forward to being back in our building soon. And so we've massively expanded our facilities here, and that's part of the Worth It initiative, and that's going to just allow us to do uh, a lot 
lot of new ministry and, and our existing ministry better. Uh, Worth It also encompasses new ministries that we're hoping to start. So we we feel called to start a bus ministry uh, and help some folks who maybe couldn't get uh, to a worship service to be able to get here. Um, we've got a Mother's Day Out slash preschool that's launching soon. Um, you know, we, we're hoping to... Uh, you know, do work in the the area of drug uh, and rehabilitation work because that's a big need in our in our uh, our area. And so, worth it just encompasses a bunch of new ministries like that. And again, when you give to Twenty Four Church, it all goes to that stuff. Uh, so let me tell you how you can give if you feel led to do so. Uh, you can give in four basic ways uh, to Twenty Four Church. You can give online at twenty four church dot com slash give. Uh, you'll see a big button on our our homepage, if you go that says give and you can give that way, you can give on our app. And so there's an app called the Church Center app, uh, and you can connect to 24 Church on that app, and uh, and you can give that way. It's super easy uh, to set up a profile and get connected and give in that way. You can also give via text message. Uh, so you see a number on the screen right now, and you can text any amount to that number and give that way. Uh, or you could mail in a check, uh, kind of the old-fashioned way, to P.O. Box 230, uh, and the whole address there is on the screen. And again, when you give any of those f- in any of those four ways, it all goes to the Worth It initiative, and we're going to do our best as leaders here at 24 Church to steward that money and to use it to advance the kingdom of God. And so we thank you so much for your gifts here. Uh, Chris is about to preach, and so I want to pray for him. For him. So if you would uh, bow with me and let's let's ask God to. Speak speak to us and to use Chris uh, as we listen to the word. Let's do that together. Father, uh, I pray in these next few moments, we're in this new sermon series called Armor. And so we're talking and learning about spiritual warfare, and we're talking and learning about the armor and the weapons that you've given us to withstand the attacks of the enemy and to withstand the attacks of the world system that's set against you. And so, Lord, this is a very real thing. Uh, We are very much at war in a way as believers and as followers of Jesus. And so I pray uh, right now as you you speak through Chris and through your word, Lord, uh, build us up and help us to understand how this stuff, this warfare works. And Lord, I pray that you'd better equip us to be able to withstand the attacks of the enemy. So Lord, move in power in these next few moments. Open our minds and our hearts to receive your word. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for worship. And uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, your commitment to 24 uh, in so many ways, but especially in tuning in to worship together. Uh, If you are at home, we're glad that you're tuning in. And uh, uh, just thank you for taking the time to to catch up with us. Uh, If you missed last week, we started a little series that we're doing called Armor. Uh, and it's talking about the armor of God, and uh, I want to want to jump right into this this morning uh, for us to be able to look at this together. Um, and we're going to be going through this for the next several weeks. But uh, to kind of recap, I want to read the passage that we shared last week together, and then we're going to add a verse to it uh, and look at that together today. Uh, but uh, this is out of Ephesians chapter six. And in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul gives us something, uh, as I talked about last week, that helps us with uh, being attacked. Uh, This kind of started out with uh, just... um, You know, I talked last week about personally feeling attacked, the church feeling attacked, and uh, just people in general just feeling attacked. Uh, And especially by Satan and uh, and just uh, all that goes with that. And so uh, what what do we do about that? What can we do about that? Well, Paul gives us some some really great uh, tools uh, that God has given us. Uh, And thank you, Paul, for uh, listening to the Lord and allowing him to use you to pin this uh, for us to have. But uh, uh, that's what we're talking about. And we're getting into this armor uh, that God has given us that we're called to uh, put on and take up as we see in this passage. In fact, let's just read this passage together. Uh, Ephesians 6, verse 10 And it says, it says, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. So some key things I just want to point out in that scripture, which we uh, dissected last week, um, that we're called to be strong in the Lord in the strength of His might, not our might, that we understand that that uh, we get our strength from the Lord, uh, and that we're called to put on uh, the whole armor of God, it says in verse 11. Uh, later on in verse 13, it says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Either way, we're, we're called to this, this whole armor of God. And, and I think that uh, as we as we go through what that looks like over the next several weeks, I think that's going to be helpful. And today is definitely kind of a base foundation for that. Uh, but then we also see something else through this passage that I think is worth noting, uh, is that we see... Uh, in the uh, verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And then we also see uh, in verse 13, after you therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. So we see stand mentioned three times uh, within you know these these verses right here, verses ten through thirteen, and uh, and I think that that's I think that's important. I think it's it's helping us to see a little bit of insight, and and we'll continue to talk about this by the way in the weeks ahead and what this really looks like of kind of how we you know do get attacked and, and and the Lord knows we would get attacked. He knew we would get attacked, and had for us the things that we need. Uh, to be able to endure, to be able to stand and withstand and all of those kinds of things. Uh, you know, one of the interesting things about the whole armor of God thing is, uh, and in fact, if you look this up, a lot of people will talk about uh, that when Paul was writing this, it makes sense that Paul would write this because Paul came from being a Roman soldier. So he would have been very familiar with, uh, you know, armor uh, and all those things and battle and those kinds of things. But really, the truth is, is... Uh, and we don't have a ton of time to get in this, but I don't want us to miss it, uh, is that Paul is actually pulling from the Old Testament here. He's pulling from the book of Isaiah. Uh, and as we go through this, we'll see, in the, even in the weeks ahead, but especially this week too, uh, we'll see that, that Paul is pulling from that as he's bringing up these different pieces of armor. Uh, and as he talks about them, he's, he's making reference to uh, some things we see in Isaiah. Let's go ahead and read verse 14, which is our very next verse to come after uh, this. And it says this, <clears throat> surprisingly enough, it starts with stand. It says, stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. This is our verse for this week. This is what we're looking at this week uh, is for us to uh, just kind of think about and, and look at what does this mean? What is God calling us to? Uh, I think this is a base. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we move forward. But again, he starts out with stand, stand therefore, uh, having fastened on the belt of truth. Um, again, we see stand over and over in the passage. This is something that we're being called to do. Uh, we get attacked. It's just part of it. It's part of life. We all get attacked at different times. And for, you know, some of us, that's harder than others. And, uh, you know, some of us are just fine, you know, through those moments and that kind of thing. But I think that when we feel like we're doing just fine, it's generally speaking, because uh, whether we realize it or not, we're leaning on uh, God and his strength. And we're leaning on using the things that he has given us as his armor. Let's talk about the first of those things, the belt of truth. Now, interestingly enough, uh, Belt of Truth is, you know, as I've over the years looked at this passage, one of the things that's real easy for me to immediately think of is when I see Belt of Truth, it's like, oh, it's talking about God's Word. Well, we actually don't know that it is. And in fact, uh, if it was, it would be doubling talking about it because it talks about God's Word again in verse 17 as we go down, and we'll get to that in the weeks to come. So what is Paul talking about? And the truth is, is we kind of don't really know exactly what he's talking about. But if you look at the word true, uh, there's a couple of things that I think that we can take away and, and I think are helpful. Um, 
And and that's that, you know, being true is also can be like something that's perfectly straight uh, or the opposite of false. And you're like, oh, thanks, Chris. You really helped me out there. True is the opposite of false. But I mean, really think about that, uh, you know, like, you know, being not being a hypocrite, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, I, I think I think true, even being true uh, in the sense of being true to someone, in other words, that we would be loyal to Christ, uh, I think is I think is a really good a good thing for us to look at with that. Um, and and the truth is is you know obviously God's word is a part of this, and we know that. And and maybe maybe Paul is sandwiching this whole thing in the truth uh, from the word. Uh, I'm not going to discount the possibility of that, but I'm also not going to pretend that I know exactly what Paul is meaning when he is saying this specific having fastened on the belt of truth, uh, which true he is talking about, which truth truth he is talking about. Um, And so we know that the other one is coming later. Maybe it's coming here too. And either way, I think we see a piece of the puzzle that is important for us. And that is that we we are to stay focused on God's plan and his word. We know that. So let's just go with that and that it could be encompassing all those things that we know uh, we are called to do and called to be. Uh, And then we will get to more of God's truth and his word uh, in the weeks to come. The second thing in, uh, by the way, the, the belt of truth, uh, if you look in Isaiah eleven five, if you want a, a little something to kind of look at later on, uh, that's an interesting place to find possibly where Paul uh, is referencing this from. Uh, and then the next the next piece of the armor that we see in the second part of that that verse there, again, we'll go back to verse 14, uh, Ephesians 6, verse 14, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth, And having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Um, So this is talked about in Isaiah 59. Uh, And you can see in Isaiah 59 uh, where he talks about this. And I I forget the verse that it's in, but you can you can you can dig around in there and find that. but uh, one of the things that comes to my mind uh, when I'm looking at the breastplate of righteousness is I'm thinking about imputed righteousness. I'm talking about a theological term there uh, that talks about Christ putting his righteousness on us. Um, and and in, interestingly enough, putting on putting it on us, uh, much as like what we see here, this breastplate of righteousness. Um, many of you uh, have probably seen uh, TV shows. I remember we used to watch a show a long time ago that was on TV all the time, uh, just because sometimes it was just funny or whatever, but we'd watch this show called What not to wear, uh, and it'd be a couple of people, and they're you know going and capturing somebody whose friends and family turned them in for dressing, you know, crazier, not dressing well, or you know, whatever it may be, and uh, and then these people would try to help these people learn how to dress and what they needed to put on. Um, Paul is trying to help us here. He's trying to help us to see what we can put on. In other words, to fight against, to stand against uh, the things that are going to happen, uh, where Satan is going to come against us uh, in this world. And I I think that's awesome. God used him to do this and give us his word uh, that we would be able to have this. And, uh, and and no different with this. Now, righteousness is, is an interesting word, uh, and it's one of those words that I think a lot of people just go, oh, that's a church word, and kind of check out when you hear about stuff like that. Uh, you know, the, the act of being right, the being right uh, part of that, being uh, key there, uh, maybe more so than the word act, but being right, being righteous, being uh, correct, being justified, uh, that's what it means to be righteous. And so for us, the importance of righteousness is is that we are seen as righteous in the eyes of God. And you say, well, Chris, I'm a sinner. You know, how am I, how am I righteous? Well, we're, we're made righteous uh, in what Christ has done for us. Uh, in fact, we're going to look at that in just a second. Um, and, and, and we have to know that we on our own are not righteous. Uh, in fact, uh, I'll go ahead and share with us Isaiah 64, 6. Uh, it says this, it says, We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like polluted garment. 
We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. In other words, our righteousness is like filthy rags. Um, and so, you know, that's that's eye opening. Uh, because it basically is help when we really understand that it's helping us to see uh, that we don't have anything to offer God. We don't we don't have anything to come to Him and say, "Hey, well, look at what I've done for you, or look at who I am," and and that's not the way we work. Our sinful selves want us to compare ourselves uh, in many ways in this world. And we take, th- we take that notion a lot of times in our relationship with the Lord. But the truth is, is that the Lord is saying, uh, you're not righteous. Uh, in fact, Romans 3.10, in case you don't believe me, it says, as it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. None is righteous, no, not one. But there is one who is righteous, and that's Jesus. And he has given us, put on us, his righteousness, that when the Lord, the God the Father, sees us, he sees Jesus. He sees his righteousness. He sees his justification. He sees what he's done, his perfection. Uh, and and that's, that happens through uh, the work that Christ did on the cross and an empty tomb three days later. Uh, in fact, I want to read this passage for us right now. And I think this is, this is key for us this morning uh, for us to, to really get this. Romans 3.21. It says, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation for our, uh, by His blood to be received by faith, this was to show God's righteousness, because in His divine forbearance He had passed over former sins. It was to show His righteousness at the present time so that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus." So we have this amazing, we've been given this amazing gift. It's not something we can work for, not something that we can be good enough to get, uh, go to church enough for, know the right people for, talk the right way for. Basically, we can't earn it. We can't earn it. It's a gift, but we can receive that gift, and we do receive that gift when we have believed in Jesus as our Savior. That's huge. That's huge for us today. I want to read this part again to you, starting in verse 22. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For all who believe. Which tells me that it doesn't matter what you've done in this world. It doesn't matter how bad of a person you think you are, what awful things you've done in the past. You can't be bad enough or have run far enough away from God that you can't be one of the people who trust and believe in Jesus today. At this point in your life, God wants to change your life and turn it completely around for Him and for His kingdom. That's good for all who believe. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ is good for all who believe. And then it goes on, for there is no distinction, and I love that, there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. We're all sinners in need of a Savior, and that Savior's name is Jesus. And it goes on, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift. So, you feel like you're being attacked. You feel like Satan is coming against you. You feel like the world is crashing down. You feel like all of these things, maybe. Let me, let me give you a, a piece of good news today. The basis of the armor in which we are to build upon is the truth and righteousness of Jesus. 
we can stand against the schemes of the devil because of the truth and righteousness of Jesus. The belt and the breastplate that Paul is talking about here are things that we have received because of who Christ is. That's an amazing thing for us today. It's an amazing thing for us today to recognize that when God the Father sees us, he doesn't see, he doesn't see Chris, the sinner who is always screwing up, who's always messing up, who uh, yelled the other day at the kids, who didn't follow through with doing those things that he said that he would do or whatever it is. God doesn't see that. God sees Jesus when he sees me because I have believed in Jesus as my Savior. I've trusted in the work that happened on the cross, that the blood that he shed on the cross is absolutely enough to save me from my sin. And I needed Jesus to do that for me. And so today, in all of this, we understand that the foundational pieces of the armor of God is that we would fall in to truth And being true, whatever that may fully mean, we continue to seek, and the righteousness of Jesus. And it makes total sense that Paul would start here because he's trying to help us to build just the very basic understanding of what it looks like for us to follow Jesus. And that's the question today is, are you following Jesus? Have you followed Jesus? And if you are a believer, are you following Jesus right now? Are you resting in his righteousness right now in these days when you need it the very most? I hope you are. I hope you are. Because it is in that 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 is the base piece of the armor of God that that Paul, the Lord, used Paul to pin for us to start with as the armor in which we would put on to stand against these things that are coming at us. Spiritual warfare is hard. It's very hard. Um, and, and, it, and it's so hard to see it for what it is. And I, I want to remind us today of the passage that we studied last week and one of the things that it helped us to see that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, it says in verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against these other things, rulers, authorities, cosmic powers over this present darkness, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Paul is throwing out a beacon for us, and he's saying, don't fall into the trap of looking at the people around you and saying, it's your fault that things are happening bad in my life right now. It's your fault that this is going on. You're making me miserable. No, no. There are things at play. There is spiritual warfare going on. Satan is involved and he is a, he is on the attack. He wants to keep us separated from the Lord. He doesn't want us to believe. But if we do, and if we trust in him, and if we have trusted in Jesus as our Savior, not only do we get to believe, not only are we saved, but Jesus puts on us his righteousness, that when the Lord sees us, he sees Jesus. And in doing so, gives us the very base piece for us to be able to stand against the things of this world. His truth, His righteousness, the belt and breastplate are the beginning of this foundation. As we continue in this in the weeks ahead, I hope that God will continue to speak to your heart and help strengthen you to withstand the things that are coming. There's things coming, but I'm here to tell you, there is nothing Nothing that can penetrate the truth and righteousness of Jesus as we stand against those things. May God use those things in our lives as we stand not just to be able to stand for us, but to stand for him and with him through his strength. Let's pray together. God, thank you for your word and thank you for the chance that we have, Lord, to seek you through it. God, help us as we go forward in the days ahead, uh, Lord, to be able to cling to you, to be able to cling to your truth, to be able to cling uh, to the reminder that you have put on us our righteousness. It's not about how good we can be. It's about how good you are. And God, that is what we rest in today. 
God, for anyone struggling with that today, for anyone struggling to be good enough today, God, I pray that they would remember that, Lord, you are good enough and you have given that to us that we can rest in it. God, thank you for that. Thank you that it is for us not about trying to do better and work harder to earn your love, but God, instead, Lord, you gave it freely as a gift. God, thank you for the reminder of that. And our our response, Lord, I pray, would be a response of gratitude and love, Lord, that we would seek you and grow closer to you and tell others about you. God, use us, your church, protect your church in these days. Protect us in these days, God, from attack. And God, help us to see clearly what it is when it when it's happening. And Lord, help us to follow you. God, we thank you, Lord, that we can ask these things. It is because of what you've done through your son we can, and it's in his name we pray it. Amen. So right after the sermon every week, we always pause for time of response. And uh, this is appropriate because if we believe God's really speaking, uh, then he's speaking powerfully to us, and we might need to respond in some way to the things that we've heard uh, from the word and, and that the spirit is impressing on our hearts and minds today. And so I just want to ask you, what do you think God's saying to you right now? And then as you ponder that question, I want you to also think about, is there anything I need to do uh, in response to what God's saying? You know, do I need to talk to a pastor? Do I need to pray a specific prayer? Uh, do I need to talk to a friend or or my parents, or the person I came with, a uh, person you're watching with about Jesus or spiritual things? Is there somebody I need to apologize to? Do I need to take something I heard more seriously and incorporate that into my life? Uh, all those are appropriate responses. And so uh, just, just ask the Holy Spirit to impress upon you whatever he needs to say. And then I want to encourage you to respond accordingly. Uh, But one of the most important ways that you could respond today uh, is if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, I want you to consider and think about what it would look like for you to follow him for the very first time today. None of us is born uh, knowing Jesus naturally. We may be raised in uh, religious homes or Christian homes and hear about Jesus and the gospel our whole lives, but there has to be a moment for us when we say, I need that for me. Uh, It's not just good enough for my parents to be believers. I need to trust Jesus for myself. Or or maybe you didn't grow up in a Christian home at all in your life. You feel like it's kind of been all over the place. And you're like, man, I really, you feel God speaking to you right now. And you know, I, I need that for me. So let me tell you what it's about. All of us, the Bible says, quite simply, are sinners. And, and, you know, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God made a way so that we could be forgiven of our sin and to come into relationship with God. So the Bible says it this way in Romans 5.8, it says, uh, but God demonstrates his love for us because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so Jesus came and he lived the life we couldn't live. And he died the death that we deserve to die because of our sin. And he rose again to give us new life. And all we have to do to trust in him and believe on him today is to call upon his name. You know, we just have to, we have to ask him to come into our life and be our Lord and Savior and to forgive us of sins. And, and he gets to be the boss now. Uh, Romans 10 says, uh, for whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Uh, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. And so if you need to do that today, uh, I want to invite you to do that just in your own words you know, pray and and say something along these lines. God, I recognize that I'm a sinner and that I deserve death and hell, but I know that Jesus died for me. And I know if I believe in him, you'll come into my life and forgive me of my sin and become my Lord and Savior. And if you'll pray a prayer, something along those lines, cry out to God in your own words, heartfelt prayer, he'll come into your life and save you And the Bible says you'll become a new creature. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creature or new creation. Uh, Old things have passed and behold, everything's become new. And so that's what it means to become a Christian is to ask God to plead with him, to forgive you of your sins and come into your life and to become your Lord and Savior. And uh, if you need to make that decision today, please do it. Um, 
If you have more questions, because I know I just covered a lot of ground real quick, uh, we'd love to chat with you. And so right now, uh, if you want to reach out uh, to a pastor and chat some more about these things or have somebody pray with you, we would love to do that. Uh, and the easiest way for us to connect is if you go to our website, 24church.com, there's a Facebook Messenger icon in the bottom right hand of the homepage. And if you click on that messenger icon, you can reach right out to 24 Church. Uh, as pastors, we monitor this and, and we're available to chat with you right now or to pray with you right now. And so uh, if you need to reach out and talk to somebody, please reach out via Facebook Messenger or go to Facebook and reach out via Facebook Messenger and let's chat, let's pray together uh, and answer any questions that you might have. So however God is leading you to respond, believers, unbelievers, let's respond. Uh, let me pray for us as we think about these things. Let's pray together. Father, I do pray that this would not just be a Sunday where we just kind of go about our business, but Lord, we, we need regularly to meet with you and we need you to speak to us. And so, Father, right now, I pray that you are speaking and that you're drawing people to yourself. And so, Lord, help believers that are listening to respond however you're speaking. And Lord, if there's anybody here who's not yet a believer and they're tuned in and watching and they need to make that decision for the very first time to trust in Jesus by faith, Lord, I pray that you would help them to do that. Lord, I pray that you would help them to understand what it means to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so, Lord, just move in power and help us to trust you, to have faith in you. And Lord, I pray that you would move right now in this way. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right, so we are about done today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before you hop off, uh, let me tell you about... Um, just a couple announcements that you need to know about. Uh, one that we've been talking about for a few weeks uh, is that uh, the angel tree season is fast approaching. So every year uh, as a congregation, we adopt uh, multiple children throughout our community uh, and help them have a Christmas and they wouldn't otherwise have Christmas presents uh, without with our, this generosity. And so uh, we're not quite taking angels yet in doing that, but in leading up to that, we're asking for some volunteers to help us make this event happen. So this is kind of a, a behind the scenes uh, way of helping 24 Church. Uh, but if you're at all interested in helping organize gifts and names and kind of kind of work behind the scenes on our angel tree um, outreach this year, I wanna invite you to go sign up and say, yeah, I'd volunteer. Again, you can go to 24church.com scroll to the bottom of the homepage and you'll see the the angel tree graphic. You can click on it and you can sign up. Uh, and we've already had several volunteers sign up, but we just need a few more. So if that interests you at all, please go sign up for that and help us. Um, the other big thing is just uh, to know that we meet every single week uh, in person as well as online. And our in-person meetings right now are taking place at Pleasant View, uh, not Pleasant View Elementary School, Pleasant View Christian School, uh, which is right down the street from us. Uh, they've been really gracious to let us meet in their gymnasium right now. Uh, our building is nearly completed. We're getting really close, uh, but we're not in here yet. And so in the meantime, we meet every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m., two different services at Pleasant View Christian School. Uh, you don't have to sign up to attend or anything like that, but if you want to go and see the information uh, about how this meeting is taking place, uh, you know, we're trying to do it very safe, uh, social distanced. We sanitize between the services, all that sort of stuff. You can go see all the information uh, about uh, that, those gatherings and, and directions and all that sort of stuff. So we would love to have you meet with us in person if you've not uh, recently. So please go check that out again at our homepage, 24church.com and join us for worship. Uh, those are the big announcements that we have this week. So before uh, we go, Let's uh, let's hear the benediction together with us uh, for for all of us this morning, and it's in Romans eight, and these are very beloved verses. Uh, but in Romans eight, it says this: It says, "There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death." It's good news about the gospel this morning. Peace be with you, family. You're dismissed. Catch you later.